students tuning in from, from India, both live and then uh, watching the recording back as well. Um, we're delighted to, to have you guys. I know it's a bit later in the evening for you, so thank you for, for choosing to spend it with us. Um, and I've got, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce two members of the, the USC Alumni Club of London who will then introduce the rest of, of, of the call and, 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 and uh, run us through the evening. Uh, so first of all, we've got Nikki, who is a, a sports business and technology executive who um, has worked for many well-known organisations to date, including the NFL, uh, Major League Baseball's Angels and Rangers, and, and has also spent four years working alongside USC Athletics at the LA Coliseum, which I'm sure we're, we're going to hear a little bit more about later on. Um, and, and also Chris is joining us, um, and Chris is a sports writer with the Associated Press, uh, who's, been, who's been in London for the last 15 years, uh, originally from, from Rhode Island. Chris graduated from USC in 1992. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted to have them both, um, uh, you know, leading tonight's activities. They, they've put it all together, really. And they're both members of the USC Alumni Club of London. Uh, it's, it's a group that meets regularly for game watches. I think we've all been together at kind of one in the morning, stupid times of the morning, watching games um, from afar. And, and hopefully some of you on the call will be, will be with us one day as members or as visitors to, to London to, to come and watch a game with us. So without further ado, I'll hand over to, to, to Nikki. Hi guys. Um, I am very pleased to be able to, to talk about USC and USC football to everyone on the call, especially those who don't really know too much about it and are looking for more information. And, you know, this is a, a difficult time for everyone. And I can't even imagine um, being that I cannot attend football games for an entire semester at USC. That is not obviously ideal for anyone, but the silver lining is that we have some people here on the call that can really give you some, some deep insights into what it's like to be a part of the USC family and um, how meaningful it is to be, you know, on the USC football team and, you know, just the whole USC community as, as a whole. So, I wanted to start out just by giving a little bit of context to those people who don't have a whole lot of knowledge around American football in general. Um, USC obviously is one of the most historic collegiate American football programs in, in general, not just in California in general. And um, they, we have not just American football, but 21 total sports, men's and women's sports. And we play in the Pac-12 conference. Pac-12 is the Pacific 12 conference, which we have moved around through the years. Um, I think that this team is about 100 years old, maybe just over 100 years old from when it was first formed. But we have the most team championships, the university as a whole, most team championships of all time for any school. Um, I'm sorry that we're third, we're third behind Stanford and UCLA, unfortunately. We were up there pretty high for a while, but we are continuing to go back and forth with our rivals, Stanford and UCLA are other, other very accomplished programs and the, the Pac-12 as well that you'll hear more about. But just to give you guys a bit of, a, of context for that as well, the most team championships all time won is right now is being held by Stanford, 123 team championships. And the second all time is being held by UCLA, 118. And U USC is third right now with 107. So that is really impressive. And then right behind that, we've talked a lot um, internally about the Olympics and how USC has such a dominating presence within the Olympics. Um, we do have more Olympic medals than any university all time. So that's, that cannot be debated. Um, we have 309 medals lifetime, which is unbelievable, and 144 gold medals that, from student athletes who went were enrolled at USC. So it just goes to show, you know, if you want to be an elite athlete in general, in any sport, not just in football, USC is that destination in general. And there's a lot of people who really strive and, and have that hunger to go to, to the university to have, uh, to be a part of that family, part of that reputation and have be part of that brand that USC has been able to construct uh, for, for many, many years. Uh, if USC competed as a country in the Olympics, this is a, a fun fact we like to throw around, it would be 14th in the world amongst all nations and 13th in the world with just gold medals. So, you know, that's, if you want to be an Olympic athlete, USC is definitely the place to go. Um, 
Now, when it comes to football, there's 11, 11 national championships that we have under our belt. I think that's tied for around sixth place amongst all universities. And then we have 18 uh, conference, champions, conference championships. So that's just between the, the schools that compete in our conference. And then Heisman Trophy winners, we, are, we have seven, which is second all time between all of the, the universities. The Heisman Trophy is similar to like a, an MVP um, that's awarded at the end of each season. So that's actually very impressive as well. And then just a couple other stats that I think it, that are important to mention is the, the nation's highest bowl winning percentage. There's 34 Rose Bowl appearances. Um, if you haven't heard of the Rose Bowl before, the Rose Bowl is a very prestigious, um, reputable uh, stadium in Pasadena, just north of us, uh, where the University of USC is. It's used by our rival UCLA's football team as their home stadium, but it's also used as a, um, a bowl location for every year for the, you know, the, the most prestigious you know, competition between Pac-12 and the Big Ten. So let's see, we are also tied for first all time, tied unbelievable with uh notre dame another big rival of ours for nfl draft picks so if you guys are trying to understand the kind of the football factory and how it translates into professional um football with the nfl we are obviously very high up there as, as well with 511 uh draft picks total that's as of the 2020 nfl draft so we you know the no notre dame are our biggest rivals for a reason if you guys aren't sure who our rivals are you now know Notre Dame, UCLA, and now Stanford is, is starting to become more and more of a rival. Um, I would almost, I, I like to make the, the kind of comparison of USC to people here in London and Europe as, as kind of the man united of college football. Uh, the New York Yankees of college football because of our dominance for a long period where we were, you know, kind of envied by a lot of people and even hated because we were so good and, and we are still so good and have a, a history of that's very hard to compare with. So I just wanna give one more shout out before we're gonna play a quick video for the group um, to the Coliseum, which is the USC, was USC's home stadium. It's called the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Um, it was built in 1923 and has hosted three, um, sorry, two Olympiads in 1932 and 1984, and is going to be hosting the opening and closing ceremonies in 2028. So if you're lucky enough to be around LA and or USC in 2028, you will be experiencing, you know, something unprecedented, which is, you know, the Olympics taking over and the, that summer taking over campus and the whole city, which would be wonderful. And um, and yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna play a quick video and do a quick intro, and we're gonna we're gonna go from there. Hold on one second, guys. Let me share my screen. Here we go. Just amazing. 
Patrick, John, you've been right. Consistently. Thanks for being on the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, sir. We have 62 days to the election, and Joe Biden's lead over President Trump is narrowing significantly. New national poll. Okay, so without further ado, I wanted to introduce. Um, it was a 12 point gap in June. Meanwhile, Democrat Tulsa is predicting a huge Trump win on election night. Okay, without further ado, I wanted to introduce Will Poole oh. and Desmond Reed. Um, I, I think you guys saw their highlights at the very end of the video. Just a quick recap that video is basically a very quick tidbit of what you will experience if you haven't already when you go to the Coliseum. Um, it's a wonderful place to be and, and both Desmond and Will have played there for many years. So I wanna give them the floor so they can speak a little bit about their experiences. Welcome guys. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. I appreciate it. No, um, so I guess I'll go first. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it to be able to talk to, to you guys about my experience at USC and, um, you know, uh, the, the family, the familyhood, the brotherhood that I've, uh, um, you know, have able to experience while I was there on campus. But, you know, a lot of you guys are either incoming freshmen or um, some of you guys may be sophomores, juniors, seniors. But just to not be able to be on campus and be amongst your your counterparts and um, you know be a part of the experience and uh, feel the energy on campus, I really feel your pain because that is one of the biggest parts of uh, of college, right? And this this time in your lives, when you guys are 18, 19, 20 years old, um, you know, uh, being able to go to parties, well, I, 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 and you know, just experience in class, you know, meeting new friends. Um, you know, dating, whatever it may be, uh, you know, that's, that's something that you guys are missing out on. So I, I feel the pain. But um, so, you know, once I got to SC, I was class of 2000, um, 2007. So I got there in, in 03. And, uh, you know, we were basically known as, uh, you know, one of the best recruiting class ever to, to come into USC. We had a lot of, you know, big time names, five star guys. Uh, I wasn't one of them. But I was going to try anything and everything to uh, to to get on the field and and to contribute to the team. And um, you know, one of the things that you you quickly learn, you know, why you why you uh, once you get to campus, is that everyone is just as good as you, is not better. So you got to find a way, um, you know, find a way to get better and find a way to make the field yourself. And um, you know, I I just you know put my head down. I was just, you know I was just going to go to work, put in extra work. You know, one of my coaches always told me, um, you know, it's not, it's not, um, what's most important is, is what you do when people aren't looking. And so, because um, that is something that you can control, right? So whether it's, you know, spending extra time in a weight room or, um, you know, going over plays or, or doing extra drills, um, those are the things that I was, you know, willing to do uh, to make sure that, you know, I was able to, um, you know, find the field in some way. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was just an unreal experience. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, we're going to go into more detail or whatever else. But, um, you know, my first year was Pete Carroll's uh, third season as, as a coach. And, um, you know, it was also my first time of it really being a part of like a, a winning environment and winning culture. Uh, so that was one thing that would put us, uh, you know, that gave us the competitive advantage compared to some of some of the other teams that we were playing uh, was that, you know, we were going to do anything to win. And uh, Coach Carroll did a great job of making it fun as well, uh, which he made everything a competition. And so that was really, um, you know, what got us going because you would take all the offensive positions um, and we would do one-on-ones, you know, where, so if I was a running back, we're going to do drills against the linebackers. Uh, if you're a receiver, you're going to do drills against the DBs, the defensive backs. Um, and so, you know, we just, we just collided and bumped heads every day and just got after each other. And um, because we are recruiting, we're recruiting great talent as well. Um, the, the guy you're going against is a, is a five-star on the other end, right? He's a five-star linebacker. And so he's just going to make me better at the end of the day when it comes to that competition. Um, and I still remember this. So Mondays, we did um, Tell the Truth Mondays. So you would watch a film from uh, Saturday's performance. And you would literally go over every play and see, okay, what did you do well? What did you do? Uh, what did you mess up on? Um, you know, how can we get better? 
Uh, Tuesdays was, was um, competition Tuesdays where we did one-on-ones. Uh, that was, you know, full-on tackling, um, you know, full-on drills where, you know, we just got after each other. And everything is filmed. Everything is filmed so that we always say the sky doesn't lie, right? So everything on film, uh, we're able to see it and we're able to go back um, and correct it. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we did is we all watched film together as a team. And so if you got ran over or if you made a nice tackle or a nice catch, um, you know, we would all see that during film. And, and if you did something good, you know, you're luckily, luckily for yourself, you're going to be on a good end of, of that highlight. But if you did something bad, everyone's going to laugh at you. Everyone's going to, you know, uh, make fun of you, clown you, whatever it may be. And so that made you not want to be on film doing something bad, right? You wanted to say, okay, you might have got me today, but tomorrow – uh, it's going to be a different story. And so um, so that was competition Tuesdays. And then uh, Wednesdays was uh, – Wednesdays was um, no repeat Wednesdays, I think it was. Uh, no repeat Wednesdays where we would go over game plan and uh, get prepared for Saturdays. Um, and, then, uh, and then Thursdays, obviously, we're going over the last – the last game plan of what, what that was going to look like, uh, what plays we're going to run, what order we're going to run those plays. And it just made everything fun. Um, you know, one of the other big things, I'll, I'll say this as well before I let Will go in, um, is that all of our coaches coached or played in the NFL. So they knew exactly what it took to get to that level. Um, they knew exactly, uh, you know, what mistakes we would make as – 18, 19 year old uh, player and what to look for, right? And how to correct those, um, you know? And so that also made us better because, you know, we're learning from someone that's, that's been there, that's done that. And um, uh, also someone that's used to winning. And uh, that, that just, you know, that just made everything um, that much sweeter because I knew that my coach was gonna lead me in the right direction and he was gonna get me exactly where I needed to be, put me in the right position as well to make a good play. Um, and, uh, and then also too, our coaches got in it, you know, they got a part of the competition. Um, you know, uh, my running back coach played in the NFL. His name is Todd McNair. He played in the NFL for 10 years. Uh, our linebacker coach, uh, was Ken Norton Jr. Who he played in the NFL for 10 plus years as well. Won a few Super Bowls with the Cowboys, also the 49ers. Um, so he's, he's also a guy that knows the game. And it's been a part of the game as well. And so whenever we made a great play, our coach would talk crap to, to the linebackers coach and vice versa. And so that got us going, that energy out in the field, um, you know, music's playing loud, you know, it's just, just a fun time. And it, it, it really um, put us in a position to just go out there and give it our all every day, uh, in, every day in and every day out um, of the office as well. So on and off the field. And um, so I have plenty more to share, but I'll turn it over to Will. I'm sure Nikki's going to ask some questions as well. But, you know, it was, it's, it's one of the best times of your lives. Um, you know, you guys don't have any true responsibilities besides going to class and getting good grades. Um, you know, you're not paying bills. You're not, uh, you don't have car payments. You don't have, you know, mortgages. Uh, you know, go out and enjoy it. And uh, hopefully here soon, too, uh, our country can get our act together and get this whole COVID situation under control. And uh, you guys can all make it back down to campus as well. So um, that's my little spiel. I'll leave it to you. Mm. Oh, thank you, Desmond. It's hard to, it's a hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, so I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to you all um, in the various uh, countries. I think this is an awesome opportunity uh, to connect, you know, virtually. Um, I, I believe in, uh, I, I really believe in connection, human connection. And so, you know, USC for me was like probably the best time of my life uh, for several reasons. For one, I'm from New York City and uh, football is just not big in New York. So nobody ever even imagined that, you know, you would play football. And, you know, I went, uh, I went out to California to go to junior college and I got a, um, I got a scholarship to USC in 2003. Me and Desmond was in the same class. Uh, the difference between me and Desmond is Desmond was about 17, 18, you know, a traditional freshman. And I was already about 21, right? I had a little longer road. So I got to SC. They gave me a scholarship for one year. So, uh, you know, going into um, 
going into meetings with with the incoming freshmen and orientation, you know, they got writing class. I'm like, I got to do this again and things like that. And then I quickly, they quickly dubbed me Uncle Will because I was 21. <laughs> I had a mustache and a beard and I was just like, who is this guy? <laughs> it's like, uh, so they call me Uncle Wills and, and, and the name sticks to this day and I, and I love it. And, um, you know, I immediately fell at home when I got to SC. I mean, immediately is like something that just fits, you know, from, from the environment, from the coaches, from the players, from the faculty. The school is just, it, I can't say enough about it. And so, you know, like Desmond said, they gave us the opportunity to compete. Now I only had one year to play and I didn't have a starting job. So I really had to come in there, kind of take someone's job and uh, instill my will, uh, no pun intended. And, um, and that's what I did. I was able to get out there and, uh, and, get, and get started and, uh, you know, have a pretty successful, successful year and get drafted to the NFL. Uh, but the most important thing about USC was the, um, the fact that they gave me an opportunity to realize my dreams. And, you know, that's priceless, right? Dreams are priceless, right? And I, and I encourage everyone in this chat to protect their dreams, right? Coming from India, Africa, Europe, you know, I can't imagine what your dreams are but they gotta be pretty big if you're ready to cross over the pond to go to college, you know? And I think that's tremendous. And um, USC is the best place for you. And I say that not only because I went to SC and it did so much for me in my life, but um, the network. I mean, the USC network is absolutely amazing. And, I, and I'll give you a quick background on how. So I graduated, I went to SC and I went to SC to play football, that's it. And I did, and I went and got drafted. But when I finished playing football, I didn't make enough money to live off for the rest of my life. And that's probably 95, 98% of us. Um, so I was able to go back to school in 2014, finish up my degree, and then I start tapping into the network. So I'm doing commercial real estate now, and I got the job solely based upon um, using the USC network. And I, and, I, and I encourage you all, when you get on campus, to just meet as many people as possible. Just talk to everyone because this network is just so, so amazing and everyone is so kind and just wanna help. So I essentially got my job at Lee and Associates doing commercial real estate just through the network. The guy called over to my now senior partner, I got the job and I've never met the individual that reached out and got me this job physically, I've never met him. I work for him now because he's a developer and I work on his properties, but I never physically met him. And that, that's just an attest to this network. The USC network is global. Um, the football team, I, you know, doubling back, I never imagined that, I knew I was going to the NFL, but I never imagined that I would go to college, play in the Rose Bowl, win a national championship and be the number one team in the country and have lifelong friends. Like I talked to Desmond every day for like the last five years. <laughs> it's a group of us in a group chat and we're just talking every single day about everything and it and it's beautiful because now everyone has kids and like Desmond said mortgages and actual real life issues as opposed to just getting up and making sure we're on time for class and you know we know our assignments for, for, for football you know and um and that's an attest to the USC network and what USC means to myself what it means to Desmond football players and just everybody that you come in contact with that went to USC is going to have the same, you know, experience. It's like this, I can't really explain the feeling of the network, but you guys are in the best place you could possibly be because this network is worldwide. And uh, if you're a Trojan, you're a Trojan for life. And that's the truth, <laughs> you know? So, you know, once, once you get back on campus, I can't wait till you all get out there. I can't wait till you get a chance to experience um, USC football because when USC football is rolling, the campus is rolling, enrollment is higher, uh, more people want to be around. The you know LA is electric, um, and USC is by far the best school in America. That's just you know, and I and I, and I've been, you know, I played at Boston College when I got out of um, high school and it didn't work out and I transferred, so I played in the Big East. I played in you know some other places, but when I got when SC is just. You just can't compete. And um, I'm very, very thankful for the opportunity to speak with you all. Um, you know, I, I pray that you guys and, and girls are able to get back over here so you can enjoy it and get this experience started. 
because it's the experience that's going to take you through the rest of your life. And you'll always have something to, you know, go back to that it could just make you smile. So thanks. Yeah. And also real quick, Nikki, I'll piggyback on what Will just said is that um, with the SC Connections and Network, uh, to be honest with you guys, uh, that was one of the major reasons of why I picked USC uh, as well. Um, I knew that, you know, USC had a good football team, but there was a lot of other uh, good football teams at that time as well. But, um, you know, growing up in California, all I've ever heard is that USC, their connections, how great of a school it is. Um, but also, too, I heard that people who went to USC, they had the SC uh, emblem tattooed on their butts, right? So that's how, like, strong it is. It's this uh, untold you know, uh, underground uh, networking uh, experience um, that, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's like none other. And so um, when I actually, uh, my wife and I, we both went to USC. That's where we met. Um, she moved to Dallas. I ended up following her to Dallas. I reached out to the Alumni Association here in Dallas, Texas, before I moved. And um, I quickly got a response back from the president uh, telling me that, hey, I'm new to this role, but I'll get you in contact with the previous president because he current, he had this role for, uh, I think it was like three, four years or so. Um, he has a lot of connections as well and I'll put you in contact with him. So I reached out to him and let him know that I was gonna be coming in town soon if, if we can meet up for coffee or, or such, um, have lunch. Uh, he, he said yes, we got in contact. Um, I ended up coming, I ended up flying back to, to LA um, but he put me in contact with so many people to where the next time I came in town, I had either breakfast, lunch, or dinner set up with all of these alumni um, that worked in different uh, industries here in the Dallas, Texas area. And um, you know, when I go and visit other, when I go and visit other states, I'll reach out to the alumni association there as well, um, and they'll let me know what events they have going on. Uh, but also just to, to introduce me to other people as well. So it's it's the it's one of the biggest networks uh, uh, on the face of this planet. Um, there's endless connections that you can, that could be made for you guys now that are going to be, um, already connected to the, the alumni chapter in your, in your, uh, your country, go ahead and continue to strengthen those connections because at the end of the day too, what I've learned working out in the industry, it's not always, it's not always, um, you know, your great education is going to lead to that, that job opportunities. It's going to be the connections, the, um, the people that you know, that also can, um, get you in contact with with certain uh, hiring managers or certain industries uh, to get your foot through the door. So the, those connections start now. You guys are gonna build lifelong friends. Um, I always like to say family, because even my, my, uh, my friends that are non-athletes that, that I'm still in contact with at USC, they're like family to me. Um, you know, and uh, um, you know, during this time, you know, you're gonna meet your new best friends and lifelong friends as well. So take advantage of that. Meet anyone and everyone that you can on campus because you never know what, what type of relationship you're gonna build or what type of opportunities that the next person next to you uh, might have and could share with you as well. So, um, you know, always take advantage of that because we have one of the best networks. Thank you. Sorry. I, I just have one thing to say, just uh, last thing. Yeah, yeah. Piggyback on Desmond. Um, just so you know, SC across the board, academics, athletics, everything around it, it has a degree of excellence attached to it. So kind of what Desmond was saying in Football Competition Tuesday, that's in everywhere in SC. And it's a, it's a beautiful aura of excellence and expected excellence. Um, confidence, not cocky, but expected excellence throughout the entire university is what's expected from everyone. <laughs> so uh, you guys are in good company. It's going to be great. So speaking of excellence, both of you played on championship winning programs, championship winning teams. I'm going to ask a question that I think most people on this call mm -hmm. are watching this, a virtual event, want to know is what was it like to, to play on these kind of infamous squads that just about any, any you know, kid at the time watching these, these games would have given anything to be, one of, to be one of you, to be on that team and to be a part of that, that family in that moment. Um, I also want to just make sure you guys expand on, you know, what, what the, the term student athlete means, because we don't really have anything like that outside of the U.S., right? So mm. 
um, what it's like to, to have basically a, a full time job as, you know, a semi pro athlete. Um, alongside of your, you know, full set of classes and the dynamic that it creates between you and your fellow students who aren't athletes um, and how that, how you, you know, how special that can be is to have your classmates that you sit next to, who you study with, um, you know, who you, you find time with as, as much as you can outside of your very demanding schedule to come and see you play on game day at the Coliseum or away traveling to another state sometimes or across the country sometimes to support you, what that's like, because you're just going to see them next Monday for that exam in the morning and you both have the same workload in the classroom, but not off the class, off the, off outside of the classroom on the field. So that's, that seems like a very special mm -hmm. element here. I want to make sure you guys speak about. Go ahead. Well, well, a student athlete is just that, a student athlete. In some university, it might be even athlete student. <laughs> so, you know, I got a scholarship to go to school to play football. So it was expected for me to excel at football first. I mean, for lack of, that's just the way it is, right, in America. So, um, you know, that balance is important because ac academics is hugely important. Football and sports can be taken away from you like that, but you know, academics is something that will carry us through. So it was, um, it was a very difficult thing to balance, you know, being at, at practices, making sure that you up on your assignments, making sure that, you know, you're dealing with the anxieties of whether I'm starting, am I the guy, you know, all the different uh, pressures of uh, not being home. Like I was 3000 miles away from home in a new place that was like a complete culture shock. And so, you know, you miss your family. It's so many different uh, things that come into play. Um, as a student athlete, I mean, you know, the amount we have to all have classes in the morning. Our classes have to be done by a certain time because we have practice. Don't get injured in football, which is like never happens. As soon as you play, you're going to have a little nick or bump or something. So you're going to have to do training, treatment. You got to do your, your workouts. You got to do practice. You got to watch film. You got to do treatment after. Oh, and then by about seven o'clock at night, you got to go to study hall. <laughs> Cause we still got homework to do. So a lot of guys are not done until nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night to wake up the next day to start the day over again at 6 AM, whether it's practice, workouts, class, whatever it may be. And that's just our lives. And we understand that. And we know that. And uh, the university does a great job of nurturing us with that where, you know, we have food, you know, we have, um, you know, the medical staff, we have all the things that we need, but you know, it is important to understand that an athlete is a little different than just a student because you got the opportunity to just go to class. So if you want, if you're a late riser, you can start class at 11. You can start, you can start class at 1, 8, 1 p.m., you know? And um, so I think that's, that's um, something that's uh, uh, important to understand on what it takes to be a student athlete. And um, in regards to winning the national championship and playing for a winner, I mean, that was phenomenal. I didn't think I was going to do that, <laughs> but I tell you one thing, uh, you know, especially in the business world, right? We all, we all hear this, you know, we all look for athletes and that's true. We all want athletes. I want winners. I want athletes that were winners, right? Because it's a difference. It's a culture of winning. You understand how to win, which means that you understand how to take yourself out of the equation and put, and, and, and it's all about the team. And that's what it comes down to if in the real big scheme of things, whether it's a culture in your job, your family, or even the society as a whole, we should probably be taking ourselves out of the equation and see what's best for the greater good, right? And uh, those are the things that I learned from being on a national championship winning team. I know how to win. A lot of people don't know how to win. And that's what SC is. SC will teach you how to win in all levels, so. Yeah, and, and also, um, <clears throat> so student athlete. Student athlete is someone that gets pulled in every direction, right? So you're, you're pulled thin, right? So, um, you know, one big part that Will left out is that early morning workouts, those were killers. Uh, we're working out at 5, 5.30 in the morning. Um, you know, we're rising and grinding before anyone is even – woken up to brush your teeth, you know, and um, that was the first stage of, you know, we did that three to four times a week. We have to work out at 530 in the morning, 
eat a quick breakfast, go to class, um, you know, after class, uh, you know, grab a quick lunch uh, in the middle of the day. Then you got to go and watch film. Uh, so watch film on your opponents that you're going to be playing. Watch film on the, uh, the practice, your previous practice as well. So it shows you, so you can improve on how to get better. Uh, and then you go, go out after film, you go on and watch uh, or go on and play practice or uh, practice for an hour and a half to two hours. So, you know, everyone comes from a structured lifestyle as far as high school, but you normally had, you know, first through seventh period or, or whatever it may be. And, you know, you were going from math class to science class, to English class, to PE, to whatever it was. And then after school, you had your sport. <clears throat> and then you go home and eat dinner and do homework, whatever else. Well, there was a learning, there was a learning curve for us because now we have so much more going on uh, to where we're getting pulled in every direction and still having to uh, make time for school and also for sports, right? So it's, it's a lot harder. And then also on top of that, you add on traveling when you travel to games. So depending on some of the games, we might leave on a Thursday, a Thursday afternoon. So now you're missing Friday class, um, and uh, now you got to find extra time to study because while you're traveling, you're going to be doing a lot of uh, um, studying your your playbook or watching film on the team you're about to play and getting prepared for that weekend's game. So there's a lot of it's a big learning curve. Um, once again, we did have a lot of resources, but it still took a little bit of time for that system to to catch up or to uh, for you to master that system. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure and people don't realize that they think that when you're a student athlete, Hey, you just get paid to go out and perform on the field, but I still got to be eligible. I still got to, I still got to, you know, turn in my three papers for the week um, and still get a good grade. Right. And so um, just so I can be eligible to play. So it's a lot more than just, you know, Oh, I got a scholarship. I'm getting, I'm getting everything taken care of and I should be on the field every week and making a good play. So it's more than that. But, um, so student athletes, you know, I give respect to, to a lot of student athletes. Um, also, too, I want to go ahead and shout out our band because we have one of the best bands in the world as well that you guys saw in the video earlier um, that you will see and hear on campus. Uh, our band was out practicing earlier than us uh, every morning. Uh, so, you know, especially in the summertime where they go through their, um, uh, you know, the, when they have their band camps as well, they're out there grinding and have harder days and longer days than us as well. So, um, you know, I was fortunate enough that my high school director, uh, my band director in high school went to USC. So I came out to every game here in a fight song. Um, so that, that was already instilled in me as well as, as a high school student. And then I get to SC and I'm, and I'm hearing the real thing um, and, you know, seeing Traveler in our band as well. So uh, I got a lot of respect for those guys as well because they work just as hard as us if not harder. Um, then now let's take it to the national championship where we're all, where we're all grateful to talk about and all happy to talk about, you know, uh, in high school, myself, I played every sport growing up. Um, I never got past the second round to win a championship. You had to win four rounds. So I never got past round number two. Uh, so I always lost round number two. So now I get to SC and I'm a part of a winning program. And, uh, you know, I just don't know what to do with myself. You know, it's, it's, it's an exciting time because you're 17, 18, 19 years old. You're on a college campus away from your parents. Um, you know, you're out here with guys that are making you better. Um, guys that, you know, that you are, you know, shedding blood, sweat, and tears with, um, you know, on, the, on this practice field in the weight room. Um, you know, you're getting love from the city of Los Angeles, the whole state of California, all of our alumni base uh, as well. So, you get a love from also from all these celebrities uh, where we had, you know, whether it was Denzel Washington, uh, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, uh, Snoop Dogg, you know, um, Will Ferrell, uh, The Funds, The Old School Show. Uh, so, I mean, we had celebrities coming out of, um, coming out of the Woodworks to be a part of our winning culture. So that's one thing, actually, great. That's one thing that you guys will see that everyone wants to be a part of a winning culture. That's what USC is, a winning culture. So when it comes to these jobs, uh, these, these internships, sports, whatever it may be, just conversation about whoever, the Olympics, we're winners. 
So academics, it doesn't matter. Uh, our law school, our business school, uh, so on and so forth. We're just winners. That winning culture, people just, um, it's, it's, that winning culture is like a magnet. And uh, we just bring everyone from around us um, closer and closer. They're, they're drawn in. They want to see what that's all about. Uh, you guys will see that. And, and it's that energy is just, it's amazing. Um, I will say that winning a national championship as, as well as that is the hardest thing that you can do, right? Because you got to be great week in and week out. Um, you know, sometimes as well, too, you might have a game where you're not going to start off uh, the great, you know, you're not going to start off, uh, you know, winning right away. And, you know, but you got to regroup. Um, you know, one thing that we always did is that we always, um, we outworked everyone that we played. Um, that was during practice and, and, uh, and what else it may be. So during practice or the extra time that we spent in the weight room, we were able to outlast our, component, our opponents. And so, um, you know, when the fourth quarter came around, if, even if we were losing, we knew we were going to come back. We knew that we can grind it out. We knew that we had them right where we wanted them. And, uh, you know, from there on, we put our foot to the gas pedal, put our foot on our throats, on their necks, as we like to say, and uh, we just kept pushing. And, um, and, you know, throughout my career there at USC, we won two national titles. We played in the third, uh, but we lost that one. Uh, but, you know, we won the Pac-12 every year. And, um, you know, we either won an Astro title or we won the Rose Bowl as well. So uh, it was a great run, a run for the century. Um, you know, we are considered to have one of the best dynasties to ever, to ever uh, uh, exist in college football. And uh, I'm just proud to be – I'm proud to be a member of that team and I'm proud to call Will my brother and, and uh, to be able to – shed, uh, you know, blood, sweat, and tears on the field with him was, was, was an honor. Guys, you know, you talk a lot about the atmosphere. And this is a question that just came in was talk a little bit about what it's like to play at the Coliseum and what a game day, what it's like, if you can describe it from your perspective. Um, you know, a lot of people perhaps haven't actually experienced it yet on the call. And I don't think they necessarily realize that just one loss is is so devastating it can eliminate you from any playoff contention and so basically every single game your the, the potential of a championship is on the line so there's a you know a very um, a, a level of intensity that exists around the games that you probably wouldn't be able to replicate with other sports but I'm curious to hear what you guys remember from the Coliseum in the 2000s uh, what stands out about that, Mr. What like really makes it, you know, that the USC experience for you? I'm going to just go on electricity. It was so electric. Imagine just 92,000 people. It, it actually can fit, but it's standing room only. Hottest ticket in town. On my recruiting visit, Carson Palmer threw five touchdowns versus Notre Dame in the night game. And it was so electric, I already knew I was gone. And the first time I played in the Coliseum, and you walk down that tunnel. Now, they didn't do the renovations wasn't done yet. So that tunnel still had the cracks and the, the leaks from when, 100 years ago. And you could feel them. You could feel that energy walking out the tunnel. And then what we do is we let the other team walk out first. And then we walk out behind them and the band is in between us. And when they walk out, our band does the fight song on their sideline to let them know it's about to go down. And it's very <laughs> intimidating. And then we come out there and we just, our practices were harder than the games. So by the time we got to the game, it was like, look, I had a, I had a week going against this guy. He, he, he made me really upset. I'm going to just take it out on you. And it was loud and like. Do you remember Traveler, um, our mascot? I don't know if anyone realizes we have a white horse as a mascot running around the, running around the field during the games. Did you even have that awareness? Or were you so focused on the game plan? Once game time came, it was go time. I didn't care about Traveler. I didn't care about the band. I didn't care about anything. All I cared about is my job because, you know, what we, were, we were trained to just worry about one thing at a time and not worry about what Desmond is doing. 
I got to trust Desmond is doing his job. And if he not, we'll find out on Monday when we watch that film. <laughs> but uh, the Coliseum is the by far the most electric place. When SC is, is winning, <laughs> it's no better place than the Coliseum. No better place than the Coliseum. Yeah, I think Will said it best. It's just electrifying. Um, many of you have probably seen the movie, uh, have probably seen the movie, uh, God, I just drew a blank on it. Um, I uh, can't remember the name of the movie now. But anyways, it's electrifying. Um, you know, your skin is just, all the hairs in your arms are, are raised. You're getting goosebumps. You feel the the energy through your bones, you know, through your skin. And, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's just a feeling that it's, it's hard to explain, to be honest. It really is. It's hard to explain. Um, but, you know, the stadium is rocking. You feel the vibrations from the stadium. Um, you know, you don't need any extra added motivation. Like it's the fans there supporting you is, uh, it's, it's, it's unreal. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it was a time to where it's like, like Will said, it's go time. All of our preparation has now led to this one moment. I've been getting my butt whooped all week long by my teammates. And now it's time for me to take it out on somebody and let this energy out. And uh, uh, let's let let the ball roll and just just hit anything moving, you know. Um, that, that's really what it is. And let your engine just keep running. Um, and um, you know, we we knew we don't lose at home. You know, I think throughout my career at SC, my four and a half years there, I think we lost maybe two games at home the whole time. Um, and uh, and when you guys walk into that stadium for the first time. You gotta feel exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, did we lose Desmond for a second? Oh, we just lost you for one quick second. Okay. You're back. Uh, can you see me now? All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, so when you walk into that stadium for the first time and the music's playing, dropping. Can you see me now? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah. Can you can you can you hear each other on the field when it's the intensity is that loud when you guys are yelling plays at each other? Can you even hear each other on the field? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because you know, one of the most important things in football is communication. So you gotta yell it out. I need you, I need to know what's okay. happening. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We could we, we we hear each other. I mean, sometimes you can't, so you gotta get a little closer, but communication just like in life. On, a, on in sports is probably the, the number one thing. It should be at the top of the list is having the ability to communicate. Desmond, you mentioned that we, it, USC in general doesn't live, they don't lose at home. They don't lose in the Coliseum. It's, you know, it's a tradition that we have, but oftentimes what would happen is students would come for the first half and the score would be so high that the fans and the students would start to leave because the game is already over because the score is so high. So I'm curious, how did that impact your level of play on the field um, when you saw everyone leaving the game because the game they think the game's already over? I don't know if that how how that how that has an impact on you guys that you still want to keep playing for all these people. And now you have a half an empty stadium because they just want to go celebrate the game, yeah. and and you know it's not over till it's over. So I'm, I'm curious how you guys felt when you, when you would see people yeah. trickling out. Well, let, let me speak first on this because uh, for Will, that was his time to, to, to sit down, take off his pads because he's had a long day. Um, you know, oh. once, the score was that, once the score was that high, uh, it was time for him to start icing up his injuries and getting ready to, for rehab the next day. For me, that was around a time where I was just going into the game. So... Uh, you know, I was I was still up and excited and pumped up because I knew I was about to get I was about to get some playing time. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, I mean, really in sports, what they teach you is never take your foot off the gas pedal. Um, the great thing for us is that we we recruited such great athletes to where our second string, our third string guys, um, a lot of them were just as good as a first string um, or close to it, I should say. And so those guys were ready for their time to play and, and their time to shine and show the coach that they have what it takes, that they can be trusted in, in those moments. But also, too, it's time for, for us and those guys, too, to just, um, 
you know, for us too to let out our frustration because, uh, you know, have been uh, getting most of the work for the day. So, um, you know, also in sports, there's a lot of trash talking. Uh, anytime that you've seen that cloud, uh, the crowd clear out, you knew that uh, you guys were kind of running up the score. So it was, it was, it was safe and clear to be able to, um, it was safe and clear to be able to, to let that, let the trash talk start and uh, to, to let our opponents know that our fans don't even respect you guys enough to stay for the whole game. We're going to leave right now while, uh, you know, while still the, the third quarter. Um, but no, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, we, we, we kept our foot on the gas pedal and we kept it going. Uh, real quick, I know we all got a got business, but for me, you know, I was coming out of the game in halftime and <laughs> you want to cheer guys like Desmond on, right? You want to support the guys that's coming up. I was a senior. I knew I was going to the NFL and I want to make sure that the freshmen and sophomores who's going to be taking, you know, taking the uh, helm here to come is, is doing what they're supposed to do. And, you know, they got the encouragement from, uh, from the older, older vets, right? Because it's an each one teach one type of atmosphere. So that, that was what we were doing on the sideline. I mean, were we planning our night too? Possibly. <laughs> right <laughs> game's over what are you guys doing tonight <laughs> you know but we were up and we were motivating our teammates and uh it's just it just create that atmosphere one thing before I, before before we before i go is that Pete carroll had this thing when it's time to when it's time to work it's time to work but when it's time to have fun oh, we're gonna have some fun and being able to separate the two was probably the most important thing because some people just want to have fun all the time, and you can't. We got work. We got work to do. So that was, that's, that was just the bottom line there. So, Well, Desmond, I know you guys have to bounce off of the Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your stories. That was amazing. We're going to keep the Zoom going for now. Um, but yeah, we're going to share this around with, with a bunch of people. So maybe we'll get some your LinkedIn profiles in case anyone wants to connect with you guys afterwards. Awesome. Thank you all. Awesome. Fight on. Fight on. Fight on, guys. Fight on, baby. Thank you Fight guys on. for hosting us. I appreciate it. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay. So I'm trying to think of what else we should talk about and to really inform the group on, on football one-on-one -on -one and want to kind of open it up to questions. I know one thing that's probably worth discussing is what tailgating is like because it's such a unique American collegiate football experience and it's something that I cannot wait for us to share with you know all of the students if they haven't already experienced it but just want to make sure that we give some time to kind of reflect on on Desmond and Will's words and and see if there's anything else that people want to want to talk about before that no okay so so game day game day Game day is a special day. It only comes about 14 times a year. And, you know, like we said, every single game counts for a lot. It, it really is determines whether or not you, you advance at the very end of the season. So winning um, every single game is absolutely essential. And so, you know, everyone wakes up game day excited, knowing that, that we have today because we, have, we, we haven't lost a game we have a chance to go all the way and win the championship, right? So you kind of see that energy, um, that effusive energy in every aspect uh, when you wake up on game day. And it's probably worth mentioning that originally um, games used to only happen on Saturdays, but now games actually take place Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. And I think on some case, maybe Chris, you can weigh on this on Mondays as well. Or is it just Thursdays, Friday, and Saturdays? Do you know? Yeah, not not college on Monday. Okay, so, so it's, they, they've expanded kind of the days that you can have game days now, which is, you know, kind of changes the atmosphere when it's a, a school night um, on Thursdays. But on a traditional game day on Saturday, you know, people, depending on when the game starts, typically you get to the stadium, you know, as early as 6 a.m. Um, to, to kind of set up their – you know, their barbecues, um, their tents, they have, you know, beer coolers, they have TVs, and they start grilling, and they start preparing food for everyone that's walking by, and they start their games. They have cornhole every single game that you can think about across the board. 
um, outside that you can play outside. Obviously, there's a plenty of beer pong. And if you walk down um, Truesdale Way on game day at USC, you will experience you know, something like you've never experienced before because there will be thousands of people who have gathered from all over California and, and throughout the US, a lot of times people travel from all over the place to be there on game day on campus, um, just celebrating um, being a part of USC, being a part of the, the program and the, the prospect of winning uh, another championship. So typically what happens is about an hour prior to kickoff, the band, uh, the, the kind of famous Trojan marching band will lead, you know, the, everyone into the stadium. So basically everyone wait kind of parties on campus beforehand um, and they, they make their way to camp or make their way to the Coliseum around an hour or so before the game. And they follow the, the marching band is kind of the cue to start heading that way to, to the stadium um, and that the game is going to be coming soon. And a lot of times people will say that the tailgate has become more of the event than the actual football game itself. And there's a lot of truth to that just because it's such a huge family reunion every single game day. Everyone gets to come and gather and you see people that, you know, you went to school with or people, you know, that you grew up with everyone has a reason to go to campus and people who haven't even gone to the school before people who just want to be a part of it um, and are part of the culture and, and understand how, how special it is will make their way to campus for, for, for game day and be able to tailgate. So you, you basically make your way into the stadium. It's a little bit of a wait in the, in the Coliseum. There's a bunch of entrances, but there's a student specific entrance that lets you in. And then, you know, you make, you find your way to your seat and it's about, two hours of pure ecstasy, depending on the score. Um, but the tailgate typically is, you know, as long as you, as short as you want it to be before the game. And I've, I've noticed here in Europe or in, I guess in England specifically with, with um, soccer that they don't have tailgating experiences. And it's such a big part of the equation for college football. And it's something that I really look forward to you guys getting to experience firsthand. Chris, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, well, I would just like to say, you know, sort of uh, um, going off a point you made earlier about how USC is kind of like the Man U or, or a big team of, of another sport for those of you who are non-Americans. I mean, it, the thing that makes, I think, USC special, certainly for us, is that it's not even that we're a fan of a team. We're not just a fan of USC. We are a part of USC. And we went to school. We went to school with guys like Will and Desmond. I was in classes with football players and, and baseball players and, and track athletes. And, and these guys and girls, women, are part of us. So when it comes to the game and tailgating, and tailgating basically means partying before the game, in case anyone didn't know that. But when it comes to that, what it is is, it's us going to see our team. All the students who are current students, it's your team, they're your peers, they're your classmates that you're going to watch. And for those of us who are older with gray hair, it's still our team. I mean, I still, you see Nikki's wearing a USC shirt. I have tons of USC shirts and hats and sweatshirts and I mean, everything. Uh, my visa card is a USC alumni visa card. I mean. It's, it becomes part of us so much so that it's with us for the rest of our lives. And that's why we're even doing this in the first place is just because it means so much to us to be a part of that. And it's different. <laughs> when, I'm in, when I'm walking around London and I'm wearing my USC shirt, it's not like a fan wearing their Barcelona shirt. I went to USC, I'm part of USC. And I think that whole buildup of especially ahead of the game, what, whatever game it may be, but especially the football games, you know, it's, it's all part of the experience of then getting there and getting into the Coliseum, which again, as, as Nikki said earlier, hosted two Olympics, is gonna host a third, is one of the most iconic stadiums in the world. You go in there and it's packed and the atmosphere that Desmond and Will talked about, I mean, it just isn't really comparable to other sport to most other sporting events except when you talk about like a world cup final 
or something like that. I mean, these are just mega events for you, the student. It's your team. That's it. Well said. Well said. I, the only thing I, I really want to make sure we finish on is um, the fight on V for victory. Some of you guys may have seen this. Um, Maybe you haven't. I actually cannot recall the origin of the V for Victory, um, where the fight on um, origin came from. I believe it was from a newspaper editor, because I don't know if you happen to know that either, where that, that saying came from, but it is kind of the slogan of our, of our program and something that you can very shamelessly throw out anytime you see anyone wearing anything with USC on, and they will return it no matter what, 100% guaranteed, they will, they will send a fight on back to you. Um, and it's something you'll experience a lot on campus as well. It's, it's so cool that you can see people kind of riding around on their bikes, um, just throwing it out at each other, friends, friends of, if you see your friend on campus, if you see a, a, like a famous football athlete on campus, they'll return it as well. But it's something that I've seen translated over oceans quite frankly, that when I see anyone wearing any, any USC um, clothing, it's, it's an automatic return. It's an automatic connection that this person is part of the same family as me. And, and I just wanna make sure that you guys understand you've made the best decision to be a part of this family, this USC family, because there is no other family like it. James. Can I just ask a quick question? I don't, I'm not sure if it was you, Chris, so I, I might be setting you up for something you don't, you don't know about, but was there, was there an instance at Fulham with uh, Will Farrell in the? Yeah. Do you want to? So, want me to tell that story? So this this is about the fight on sign. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. have I have season tickets um, in London to see Fulham, which is a southwest London club, not one of the more famous clubs, but a fun little little team to to go and watch. And um, last year, in about October, it was during football season. Um, I was at the game. I was sitting in my in my seat, and which is sort of right next to where the um, where the locker rooms are and where the families sit, watching watching the game. The families of of the players, and one of the guys next to me, he, he leaned over and he tapped me on the shoulder and he said to me, "Hey, Chris, is that Will Ferrell up there sitting there?" And I turned and looked, and I'm like, "My God, that is Will Ferrell!" And and it was kind of close to the end of the game. It was a Saturday and we had a game that day and I happened to be wearing one of my USC t-shirts with a big USC across the chest. And so when the game ended um, and, and the players started walking towards the locker room and, and everybody sort of stood up, I just turned slightly to face exactly where he was and I looked right at him and he, for some reason, he turned and looked straight at me. I get, he probably saw the bright red shirt and I just went like this and he looked at me and he straightened his back and he went, <laughs> and that was it. I turned around and, and left. The game was over. But, but Will Ferrell and I had this mini connection from, you know, I don't know, 100 yards, 200 yards away at the end of a Fulham soccer game. So. Will Ferrell, the, I'm sure the funniest Trojan of all time. Who, I'm not sure when he graduated, but I do know that he went to USC. He was there at the same time as me. I think oh, okay, he's a there year, you go. year or two older. But, there you go. Yeah. All right, James, anything else you want to say before I we wanted to add up? one thing real quick. Oh, hi, Des. Yeah, I go. jump back on just to add this. So yeah. uh, for all you students out there, obviously everyone is um, uh, going to be enrolled into school, learning from home. Uh, but I encourage all you guys to get involved with groups or clubs on campus. Um, you know, obviously you get, it's hard for you guys to meet new students, new friends. But that's a way to get involved. Uh, a lot of these clubs will be having uh, uh, meetings uh, on Zoom as well, so you can get involved in whether it's something that you, um, uh, a common interest you have, or whether it's something to do with your major on campus, there's always going to be something for you. Um, as well, too, when you do finally do get to campus, um, find out uh, opportunities where uh, SC will be doing stuff uh, back home that can help your communities or your country as well. Um, a lot of these, there's a lot of different um, schools uh, within SC that might be either um, you know, some, some of these schools have like outreach programs where they'll go to different countries and, um, you know, provide a fresh water uh, source for different villages or whatever it may be, find a way to get back and help others. There's a lot going on on campus. Get involved early on as well. Um, mm -hmm. some, 
now more importantly, or now it's, it's most important for you guys to get involved early on because you are you are away from campus. So uh, that's a way for you guys to meet friends, um, you know, start to, to um, start to get involved now and at an early stage. Spot on. Thanks, Des. No problem. <laughs> See you right. guys. Yeah. James, anything else you want to say before we go? No, I mean, nothing really. Firstly, thank you for, 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 for everyone who's attended and for, for Nikki and Chris for putting this together. I think it's been, I, I've been kind of smiling, listening to all the stories. I think it's been, it's been fantastic. Um, we've got a few minutes. I, I wouldn't mind knowing, knowing your favourite kind of USC football moment, if, if there is one or if there's a moment that kind of that stands out for, for both of you. I've put you on the spot here. This, this was not rehearsed. <laughs> so I just, I don't know. Chris, you go first, to go, go first, so I can, I can think of mine. <laughs> well, I, I, I definitely have one. Um, I mean, on the field, let's say, or when the USC team was on the field, I suppose it would be winning the national championship in, in Miami. I, I went yeah. to, to yeah. the game there. Unfortunately, I went to the game the next year at the Rose Bowl and, and we lost to Texas. But we won the Orange Bowl and the national championship. Um, but uh, I think my sort of, let's say, my claim to fame, my, my greatest moment when it comes to USC football was my, my first year, my freshman year of, of college, um, when we played UCLA. Um, it was 1988, and um, we were 9-0. We were um, UCLA had been number one at around Halloween time and lost, I think, to Washington State, maybe. Um, and then we moved up, Notre Dame moved up to number one. Um, I think we were number two. And anyway, we were going into the game against UCLA. We still had Notre Dame to play at Thanksgiving a week later. And um, Rodney Pete was our quarterback. He finished second in the Heisman Trophy um, voting that year. And there was a question whether he had the measles and stuff. Anyway. My buddies and I in the dorm, we decided that we needed to do a prank on UCLA, which is, which is a tradition they've really tried to cut down on recently. But it used to be that, you, that the students did a lot of pranks to the other team. So we were trying to think of a good one, something that maybe would be remembered. So certainly I remember it, but I'm not sure anyone else does. But what we did was um, we got six of us, one guy driving and five criminals, let's say, and um, we bought, we drove to Pasadena, which is where the Rose Bowl is in section of Los Angeles. The game was gonna be at the Rose Bowl. And we bought 250 pounds of flour. So that's about 100, let's say 120 kilograms of flour, each with a 50 pound bag each. Um, we then broke into the Rose Bowl. And with our huge bags of flour, we wrote USC number one in the middle of the grass in gigantic letters. And then we went into the end zone where the, at the end of the field where one side says Bruins and the other side says UCLA. And we wrote a gigantic F in front of the UCLA. So F-U-C-L-A is something that we say to them, which is not very uh, nice, but anyway. And, uh, and the USC number one in the middle. At the time, um, they didn't have any U UCLA writing in the middle of the field. It was just blank. It was just a big green space. So, so we did that. We were very proud of ourselves. We went back to campus. And one of, the, one of our friends in the dorm said, they're just going to sweep it up. I mean, no one's going to see it. So we're like, God, you're right. Let's go back. So we drove back to Pasadena and we each bought huge like three gallon jugs of water and we watered all the flour so it would cake in. And then when the sun came up, it killed all the grass underneath it. So even though they were able to take off the flour in the middle of the field before the game, you can, you can see it on YouTube, they, the games on YouTube, you can see the burnt out grass underneath it, USC number one. And wow. you can see a lot of the, the, the flour still in the end zone for the F uh, during the game because we do so much on the F that uh, I don't think they can get it all out. So that's, that's my favorite USC football. Thank and we won. <laughs> I can't compete with that story, I'm afraid. Um, I hope they're still not looking for someone, Chris, because I think yeah. you just, just incriminated yourself a bit there. It's <laughs> incredible. It's an incredible story. 
Yeah, uh, my, my me most memorable USC memory is probably what Chris mentioned at the very top, which was at the Orange Bowl in Miami, winning a championship over Oklahoma, which is also a very prestigious program. Being from Texas, it was even sweeter to see that we were beating a team that, you know, that basically the, the whole state rallies around their, their program um, every time they play. So for me, it was the sweetest way to start um, or because I was actually in school, enrolled in school, winning a championship. And there was just, there's nothing like that to know the timing that of your program, they're winning championships while you're in school. It's pretty unbelievable. So hopefully everyone that is watching this will also get to experience winning a championship while in school. It is one in a million and, and it is very, very possible if you go to USC. Brilliant. Thank you both so much for, for putting this together. And, and I know Desmond and Will have gone now, but for, for thank them as well for, for joining in. I think a couple of people have touched on the kind of worldwide lifelong network and this event is kind of testimony to that. It's, it's, you know, it's, we've got people from all over the world tuning in. We've had speakers from, I think, was it Texas, LA, um, Sweden, is it Sweden, Chris, and, and London and everywhere. And, and, you know, thank you so much, Nikki and, and Chris for putting this together. I think it's been, it's been really wonderful. And if you're watching live or if you're watching the recording, we'll, we'll share kind of, um, I guess your LinkedIn details. We can, we can add that. Um, so people can connect to you both and, and, and the guys before as well. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you both yeah. so much. Is there anything else anyone wants to add or? Just fight on. Fight on forever. Fight on, fight on forever. <laughs> thank you all so much. Okay, guys. Have a great evening. Thank Take you. care. Bye.